Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is The Diva Story, Part 3. Huh, no chance of cancelling that one, I guess. Hannah muttered. She was checking her schedule for the rest of the day. Her assistant peeked around the corner. Sorry, what did you say, Hannah? Hannah closed her laptop. Nothing. Just forgot I have to have dinner with that opera singer tonight, she said. Hannah hadn't forgotten, of course. She had been dreading this appointment ever since it had showed up in her calendar. Hannah had studied Mildred North's biography a couple of days ago and had realized she had absolutely nothing in common with the woman. She barely understood what some of the words in the resume meant, to be honest. Susie? She usually kept her door open, and her assistant immediately walked into the office. Yeah? Do you know anything about opera? Hannah asked. Susie looked surprised. Ah, uh, no. I thought you used to go a lot when you were a kid, she said. Yeah, I did. But I didn't really pay attention, you know. I was a kid, Hannah replied. Susie smirked. Of course you didn't. You hate anything fancy. Except for the chocolate we sell, of course. Susie winked and walked out of the room. Hannah was drumming her fingers on the desk. Shit, I really have no idea what to talk about tonight, she thought. There was no way in hell Hannah would call her mother for help. She didn't want to get another lecture. Hannah glanced at the clock. It was almost 5 p.m. Maybe she could call Charlotte, her mother's personal assistant. She might be able to help out with tips on how to approach tonight's dinner, Hannah guessed. Hey, Susie, can you connect me to Charlotte? Sure thing, Susie immediately replied from the other room. Hannah waited for the blinking light on the phone to show. Charlotte, she heard I'm Susie fine. greet Charlotte. Then, on line one. Thanks. Hannah picked up the receiver and pressed one. Hello, Charlotte. How are you? Miss Emsworth. What a delight to hear from you. Hannah smiled. Charlotte was always a bit formal. Hannah's mother expected this from her PA. Thank you. It's lovely to talk to you too, Charlotte. How are the preparations for my mother's move going? Oh, just fine. Everything on schedule. We'll have to say goodbye soon. Hannah nodded. She would, of course, travel to Europe frequently to visit her mother. But Charlotte would stay here and rarely see her former boss again. Her mother had graciously offered the assistant a new position at the foundation, which is why Charlotte was the perfect person to ask for help. Yes, time has flown by, Hannah said. Charlotte, I was wondering if there is anything I should take into consideration tonight. Charlotte seemed surprised by the question. She was quiet for a bit. For your meeting with Miss North? She finally asked. Yes, her biography was... Hannah tried to find another word for incomprehensible. It seemed like her mother's assistant was used to reading between the lines, though. Would you like me to send you a list of appropriate discussion topics? She suggested. Hannah raised her fist in victory. 
Uh Uh-huh, yes. That would be great, Charlotte. That should make this first meeting a lot easier. Thank you. Okay, I'll send it over in 30 minutes or so. Hannah suddenly thought of something else. Are we sending a car for Miss North? Of course, Charlotte replied. Good. Thank you, Charlotte. You've been a real help. Charlotte chuckled warmly. (laughs) My pleasure, Miss Amsworth. Charlotte, seriously, call me Hannah. Now that Mother is leaving, and you'll be working for the Foundation, we can lose all this formality, no? Another brief silence on the other end of the line followed. All in good time, Miss, Charlotte then said. Hannah shook her head in amused disbelief. Okay, Charlotte. I look forward to your list. Have a great evening. Good night, Miss Amsworth, and good luck with your first meeting as a patron of the opera. Hannah quirked an eyebrow. Was Charlotte teasing her? She didn't get a chance to find out, because Charlotte had already hung up. Maybe there was more to her mom's assistant than Hannah knew. She stared at the phone and then forced herself to focus on what needed to be done before she could leave for the night. Susie? Yeah? Have you heard from Patrick about the new store in Boston? No. Get him on the line for me, will you? Straight away. Hannah studied the list Charlotte had sent her one last time. The email contained a summing up of polite questions Hannah should and could ask, plus a bit of extra info on the expected answers. Dinner with an opera singer for dummies, Hannah thought. If she wasn't about to sit down with a stranger she had nothing in common with, at a fancy restaurant to make things worse. She would have smiled at Charlotte's last sentence. Enjoy yourself. Miss North seems like a very interesting young lady. What was that all about? Hannah wondered. She put her phone away in her blazers in her pocket and walked up to the restaurant's entrance. Once inside, she was immediately approached by a slimy-looking man in a three-piece suit. Mrs. Emsworth. Hannah had no idea why the man immediately knew who she was. She didn't remember meeting him before, and she rarely dined here. She smiled thinly. It's Miss Emsworth, she pointed out. The man made a slight apologetic bow. Apologies, Miss Emsworth. Hannah wanted to roll her eyes, but stopped herself just in time. Have we met before, Mr... He straightened up and shook his head, his skin now becoming a bit blotchy. No, Miss, I just recognized you from the pictures in the press. Hannah arched an eyebrow. It wasn't like she was in the papers all the time. There had been that article in the New York Times recently about her taking over as CEO of Le Roi Chocolates soon. And she was easy to recognize. Her hair was as coppery red as hair could get. I'm here to meet with Miss North, she said coolly. Of course, miss. She is waiting for you. Hannah peeked into the dining room. He followed her gaze. I've given you a secluded table, as requested, he said. I'm sorry? 
Hannah focused back on the host. Your staff ask for a quiet table, miss. Hannah closed her eyes briefly. She couldn't believe this. Why on earth would Charlotte do this to her? This wasn't a date, for God's sake. Everything okay, miss? The host asked. Hannah opened her eyes and forced herself to smile. Sure. Please show me to Miss North. Of course. He motioned for her to follow him and turned quickly. Hannah looked around the restaurant and noticed every single table was occupied. She recognized several faces and even got a few nods from other guests. She quickly averted her eyes when she spotted an acquaintance she really did not want to talk to right now. Okay, maybe a secluded table wasn't that bad after all. The host walked all the way to the back of the busy room, where a few tables were partly hidden behind a low wall with several flower arrangements on top of it. Hannah stepped into the calmer area, and immediately saw Miss North, who was getting up from her chair hastily. In a split second, Hannah took in the very classy black dress the woman was wearing, with silver and diamond accessories. Her dark brown hair was pulled back into an elegant, loose braid. Hannah was a bit underdressed compared to the singer, she realized. She hadn't bothered changing out of her dark gray business suit and had not accessorized, apart from the smartwatch on her wrist. If Miss North wasn't giving her such a confused look, Hannah would have thought the woman was a full-blown diva based on her outfit. She gave the host a curt nod to signal he was no longer wanted. He hesitated for a moment, glancing at their chairs, but then got the hint and hurried away. Hannah extended her hand. Miss North, it's so nice to meet you at last, she said, because she knew that was exactly what she was supposed to say. Her dinner companion took her hand and finally met her gaze, still looking quite shocked. Hannah gave a quick, polite squeeze and then gestured for Miss North to sit down. The woman remained standing, however, with her wide brown eyes fixed on Hannah. Um, you are Miss North, right? Yes. Of course. I'm sorry. The singer finally sat down. Hannah decided she was sick of her blazer. She took it off and hung it over the back of the chair. She then took her seat, unbuttoning her silk blouse's sleeves so she could roll them up. Hannah noticed Miss North glancing at the empty glasses on the table. Do you want some water? Hannah asked instinctively. Yes, that would be wonderful, her guest croaked. Okay, let me just... Hannah turned to look for a waiter and waved. A man in an all-black suit quickly rushed over to the table. I'm sorry if you've been waiting too long, ma'am. No, no, it's fine. Hannah interrupted him. Can we just get some water straight away? Of course, ma'am. The waiter hurried towards the kitchen doors. Hannah smiled at Miss North. It shouldn't take long. The singer nodded gratefully. Hannah was a bit unsure what to do or say. She had expected an overwhelming personality with a dazzling Broadway grin to join her for dinner. 
Instead, a shy and confused-looking woman was sitting across the table. Hannah wondered what was wrong. Did she have something on her face? Did her blouse have a huge stain? She looked down to inspect her clothes. The waiter arrived just as Hannah was discreetly checking if something was glued to her forehead. There you go. Thank you. We need a bit more time before we order. Of course, ma'am. He nodded politely and walked away. Hannah waited for her guest to drink some of the water. Slowly, the color returned to Miss North's face. The singer took another sip and then quietly put down the glass. Hannah smiled again. Feeling better? She asked. I apologize, Miss North said. I was taken by surprise, to be honest. How so? Hannah asked. She crossed her arms. I was under the impression I would be meeting with... Your mother, I assume? Hannah frowned and thought for a second. Then her lips parted in an... Oh. The poor woman thought she would be meeting with Lucille, her mother. And here Hannah was instead. She picked up her own glass of water... Okay, this was very uncomfortable. Judging from the look on her face, it must be quite the disappointment to see me instead of my mother, Hannah thought, feeling her chest tighten. Um, <clears throat> yes, my mother is moving back to Belgium next week. So she asked me to take over. Ah, uh, of course. Then, silence again. Hannah was getting sick of it. She tried to lighten the mood. Miss North, I'm afraid you're stuck with me. I'm Hannah, by the way. The singer's cheeks turned red. So, you are Miss Emsworth Leroy? Daughter of Mrs. Emsworth Leroy? She asked. Hannah nodded. Yeah, but please call me Hannah. I hate all that formal stuff. Um, okay. Good. Can I call you Mildred? Of course. You prefer Miss North? Hannah quickly asked. No, Mildred is fine. Or... <clears throat> Most people call me Millie. My mom or grandma say Mildred when they're upset with me. Other than that, I only go by Mildred in my official biography. Aha! Uh -huh. She can talk, and actually seems human, Hannah thought. Millie, it is then, she said. The waiter showed up like he had been given the cue the ice was now finally broken, and it was okay to bring over the menus. Miss. He each handed them the suggestions list, and then presented the wine menu to Hannah. Here you go. She accepted both of the menus, and started to study the list of dishes. Would you like an appetizer? Hannah looked up at Millie with a questioning look. No, thank you. Water is fine, the singer said. Um, I'll Hannah turned to the waiter and asked for a gin tonic. With some cucumber, please, she added. Charlotte had told Hannah opera singers rarely drink alcohol because of its effects on the vocal cords so she wasn't surprised her guests stuck to water. It would have been nice to have the woman loosen up a little with a drink. But no such luck. I'll be right back to take your order, the waiter said, before running off again. 
Hannah studied Millie, who was running her finger over the menu as if she was considering the dishes one by one. Her face was serious, and Hannah now finally saw the resemblance between the classical beauty on the picture and the woman sitting in front of her. If this woman wasn't an opera singer, she could easily be an actress or a model, Hannah thought. No, she would never be a model. Hannah already had a sense Mildred North would consider it an insult if you suggested she could make a living off of her looks. Millie was a woman who wanted to be valued for her hard work and talent, Hannah guessed. She recognized this because she too wanted to be judged on her performance, the result of her work, and not her looks, her family, or her money. Maybe they had something in common, after all. But that still didn't make this dinner any more comfortable right now. Hannah hoped the gin and tonic would arrive soon. She really needed it. In the meantime, though, she would have to give small talk another go. Anything particular you fancied tonight? She asked, gesturing at the menu. Millie had reached the bottom of the list. Yes, I think I'll go for the seafood salad. Hannah tried to find the salad on the paper in front of her. She had been too preoccupied with studying her companion to choose what she would have for dinner. And the waiter would be here any moment. Huh, that does sound good. I think I'll follow your lead, she said. Millie just nodded politely. Not much effort on her part. Does this woman even want to be here? Hannah wondered. She mentally listed the topics Charlotte had sent her and picked the most obvious question. How do you like the Young Artist Development Program so far? She asked. She briefly wondered if she had gotten the name of the program right. But Millie sat up and brightened. So Hannah thought she'd done okay. I had my first coaching sessions this week, Millie said. Hannah could finally see some fire in Millie's eyes. I understand these sessions are pretty special, she asked. Millie tilted her head, her eyes fixed on Hannah. Hannah suddenly felt uncomfortable in a whole new way. Once she was talking about singing, Millie apparently had the most intense stare Hannah had ever seen. That stare now signaled surprise again, and not in a good way. Hannah pursed her lips and glanced around to see if the waiter was near. Where the hell was this guy with her gin? Yes, it is indeed special to be able to work with the most prestigious teachers and musicians in the world, Millie finally said, dryly. Hannah nodded nervously. She tried to think of a relevant follow-up question Charlotte had listed. Do you hope to pick up a role in one of the shows? She asked. She didn't think she got it right, but at least Millie was now smiling, be it a little thinly. Of course I'd like to be part of a production, the singer said, but that rarely happens in the first year of the program. For now, I'm just lucky I can attend rehearsals. This sounded odd to Hannah. You just go watch other people rehearse? Millie arched a perfectly maintained eyebrow. I mostly listen, and the people rehearsing aren't just any people. 
They're the biggest talents working in my industry, she said, sounding somewhat annoyed. The waiter finally arrived. It took every ounce of Hannah's self-discipline not to snatch her drink from his tray. Are you ready to order? Yes. She waited until he had put the glass on the table. Yes, we'll both have the seafood salad. And had taken their orders. Very well. Then, finally, Hannah raised her glass and took a big gulp of the gin and tonic. When she met Millie's gaze again, the singer was looking at her questioningly. She even folded her elegant hands on the table and sucked in her lips. Hannah took in a deep breath. It seemed like this was going to be a long and difficult evening. No matter how hard she tried to be a good hostess. This time, Millie broke the uncomfortable silence for a change. Would you mind if I ask you a pretty frank question? Hannah perked up. This sounded promising. She would take Frank over polite any day. Of course not. Ask away, she said, and threw in her charming, confident smile. Were you involved in my selection for the grant? Millie asked. Oh, shit. Busted, Hannah thought. She shifted in her seat uncomfortably. No, I wasn't, she replied. I don't know that much about opera. I don't even like it, to be honest. Hannah saw Millie wince. She quickly added, but it's very important to my mother. And it meant the world to my father. So, she shrugged. Millie's shoulders slumped. God, she's really disappointed now, Hannah realized. Disappointed to be stuck here with me, the opera hater. And I can't blame her. Hannah had to say something to comfort Millie. Look, I know you expected my mother to be your mentor, she said carefully. Hannah could see she was right, because a blush started to creep up Millie's neck. And I know I'm too young to be any kind of mentor, but I still want to honor my father's legacy. And I'll do everything within my power. She hesitated. And understanding, she added, to support you and your career in singing, Millie. Thank you, Millie said after a while, very quietly, and still looking anything but happy. They sat in silence until the waiter arrived with their salads a few minutes later. Two seafood salads? Hannah yes. ordered a glass of wine to go with her dinner. Um, I'd like a glass. Millie stuck with water. After two more uncomfortable minutes of silence, Hannah decided to give it another try. She was feeling a bit braver, no doubt the effect of the G&T. The freshness of the cucumber still lingered in her mouth. So, got a relaxing Saturday planned tomorrow? She asked. Millie put down her fork and glanced up at Hannah. She lifted one shoulder. Um, not really. I have an extra session with my singing coach early tomorrow morning. After that, I'm studying, and I have a workout scheduled in the evening. Sunday, then? Hannah tried again. Everyone took a bit of time off on Sunday, right? Even she did. And she was a total workaholic. But Millie shook her head. More studying and a long run. Hannah jumped on a topic she actually felt comfortable with. 
Your workouts keep you sane? They sure do that for me, she said with a smile. Melly wrinkled her nose. Not really. I just have to keep in very good shape as a singer. Hannah couldn't stop her eyes from drifting over Millie's, uh, shape. The singer had a feminine build, with only the slightest suggestion of toned muscles in her arms. You would never guess she was a regular runner or fitness freak. Hannah couldn't blame her. She dragged herself to her elliptical machine every morning, only because her vanity demanded it. She'd been bluffing about workouts keeping her sane. In reality, she always read her email or watched the news while working out. Again, the silence. Hannah munched on a delicious piece of shrimp while she thought of what to say next. She hadn't had much success so far with any of the questions on Charlotte's list. Maybe she should just give up. Eating in silence wasn't that bad, after all. It sure seemed a hell of a lot safer. How often are we supposed to have these dinners? She wondered. She made a mental note to ask Charlotte. Once this awful night was over. This was part three of The Diva Story. Now, I am tired, so I can't do any bloopers or other funny stuff this week because I'm just empty. <laughs> so I'm going to go for the classical. If you like this podcast, please leave a review or rating on iTunes. And I am going to address Canada. You see, Canada... When I get a certain number of stars, like ratings or reviews, in an iTunes store, they pop up. They're immediately visible to everyone. Now, this has already happened in the United States. Thank you. Australia. Thank you. Great Britain. Thank you. But not Canada. So, I'm a little disappointed. No, I'm just kidding, except... Well, it would be nice if those stars would pop up in Canada one of these days. So if you do like this podcast, please leave a review or rating. That was it for this week. Thank you so much for all your encouraging messages about the Diva story. They really help. And thank you for all the coffee I received this week. I really needed those and I drank them all. So thank you and I will see you next week.